pain, that medically elusive evil. What about changing the focus from controlling pain to understanding pain? As more than a symptom, can pain be cheated? My name is Dr. Dean, chiropractor and physiotherapist. My goal is to reframe how medicine understands pain to improve care. This podcast series is dedicated to a same-day conservative treatment for low back pain. This podcast has a companion published article number 13. Welcome to the Pain is Not the Only Problem podcast. The essentiality of conservative care is being reevaluated. The contributors to patient symptoms are being re-explored. All options are on the table. Article 13, pain is not the only problem. Kinesiopathology and Spinal Stability, Part 1. These articles intend to reevaluate the prevailing clinical practices thought to manage low back pain, submit and debate novel low back pain contributors and mechanisms, meet patient expectations and satisfaction, and clinically meaningful results, recommend a conservative non-surgical course of care to override pain instantly, and restore ADLs and patient confidence on the first visit at low cost. Kinesiopathology describes the patient's deficits or defects during movement, the inability to plan and map movement patterns simultaneously performing 1. Engaged spinal stability, 2. Core neutrality, 3. Proximal to distal sequencing, and 4. Accuracy of motor mapping. Of course movement defects occur. Patients do not have the knowledge, time, nor the scientific interest in researching and practicing movement excellence. However, athletes do. This two-part article will describe the universal scope of kinesiopathology by first zooming out to take a broad collective look at the contributors to non-traumatic low back pain, then zooming in to discuss the integration of the contributors into spinal stability strategy. I want to bring this topic down to scale, so I'm only going to discuss the solutions. Solutions that, when applied to any low back motor defect or faulty motor pattern, will correct it simply due to economy of the treatment and not the details of the injury. The purpose of this article is to change the usual recommendation of intake and examination. The clinician does not need to evaluate every muscle in the patient's body, nor to perform specific muscle testing or to perform classical orthopedic exams. Instead, save time by zooming out. Understand this biggest picture by evaluating the entire patient presentation with this three-part exam. One, evaluate the reproducible complaint. Two, evaluate the involved faulty motor patterns, and three, evaluate spinal stability. Dean 2016 offers us this definition of spinal instability. Spinal instability is due to defects and deficits related to the spinal motor experience with articulations in multiple planes of motion of meaningful adaptive benefit utilizing both aerobic and anaerobic energy systems and axial spinal loading, while avoiding risk-promoting activities of position, duration, intensity, and monotony, and perpetuating certain personal biases and attitudes about spinal health. While other processes are to be considered, for example, inflammatory, degenerative, organic, or metabolic, in large part, low back pain complaints are due to spinal stability defects, spinal instability. Spinal stability defects describe faulty movement patterns, either learned or acquired. Defects can be learned from poor instruction, from copycatting, or from self-learning. Defects can be acquired due to poor observation or management, creep, misinformation, and personal bias. In the case of bias, a patient may be working in a job, doing an activity in a way that is not mechanically prudent. For example, a housekeeper may vacuum in a risky, outstretched body position, only caring about cleaning and not about low back mechanics. I once had a patient that worked all day suspended from a mast in a body sling doing rigging for Cirque du Soleil. She had back pain complaints. 
Certain jobs require walking on a concrete floor all day. In these cases, the lower back must deal with undesirable loading. Spinal stability defects occur when the knowledge of spinal mechanics is absent or the desire to learn spinal mechanics is absent. Spinal stability requires that the spine have ongoing workloads in a variety of positions and patterns each day. These workloads must be meaningful and not destructive. These workloads should support a desire to improve spinal stability as a priority. The spine must be primarily loaded vertically, oriented with gravity, with episodes of rotation, lateral flexion, extension, and elevation, such as standing from a squat, and minimally flexed. The workload should occasionally represent aerobic work. Duration at submaximal levels such as vigorous long stride walking or seated or standing rowing, which is made better even with some rotation. Locomotive calisthenics and standing vinyasa yoga, for example. Aerobic workloads should cause breath seeking deeper ventilation. The workload should occasionally represent anaerobic work, such as strength training, burst activities, such as ladder drills, correct system basic drill sets, 100 meter sprints, tennis stroke drills, and baseball pitching, for example. Notice that the suggested spinal stability work is not gym-based and that it is not exercise-based. It is skill-based, the opposite of physical therapy. Diversity and meaningfulness in work should be explored and monotony should be avoided, such as walking every day on a motorized treadmill or on an elliptical machine or stationary cycling. Finally, spinal stability workloads should avoid personal biases such as avoidance due to fear of pain or flare-up or avoidance due to disinterest or claiming that one is too busy. The classic example is not working the spine in order to, air quotes, protect it. This article is about the importance of the seven contributors to long-lasting spinal stability, as described by Dean 2016. Restoration of activities can usually begin the same day since the spinal stability drills will also relieve symptoms. These seven contributions should be discussed and provided with usual patient education in every case of low back pain, regardless of the mechanism of injury, regardless of the type or location of the pain. In all low back pain patient cases, reestablishing spinal stability prevails since pain is not the only problem. Thank you for joining me today. Let's advocate for improved patient satisfaction and for the profession. Let's demonstrate a cross-cultural willingness to strengthen medicine. Thank you.